I'm Jason from Carolina Paddleboard, uh, and today this is part three of a three part series about how to buy a paddleboard. Typically at the shop, what we like to do is start the conversation, see what you want to do. So when it comes to surf style stand up paddle boards, it really depends. You want to make sure you match the board to the person's experience level, interests, and their style of surfing. It runs the gamut, just like with regular traditional surfing. You have longboard style enthusiasts, guys that are more shortboard enthusiasts, um, and now you have all the niche stuff like the Simmons type boards, and as of late, the, the Tomo influenced boards uh, that you're seeing come out from JP Australia, Nash, and, and a number of other companies with the real parallel rail. Uh, is that longboard style? They tend to be a little higher volume, like with this Nash 11 footer. This one has a pin tail, it's a little wider, a little more volume in the nose, so it makes it super fun for nose riding. Um, you can kind of see the way they have the, the contours along the bottom of the board, a little bit of the concave under the nose, and that kind of gives you a lot of lift in the nose for nose riding. So if you like the cross step, trim, get a bunch of speed, these tight boards are good for that. Uh, also great just all around cruisers and flat water. Um, so it's a good dual purpose board. So then sometimes you have the guys that grew up surfing, riding short boards, um, they'll come in and uh, get on a lower volume board. Again, there's a lot of different flavors, types of rocker profiles, how uh, foil affects the board, different bottom contours and how they work in concert with the foam distribution uh, and different shaped tails. That all lends themselves to different feelings um, in how you pair those. Uh, I tend to like a more rockered out, thinner board. I'll go a little longer to maintain some bit of glide, but I do like the, the lower volume personally. Squash tail, uh, very reminiscent to what um, Colin McPhillips is riding for Ovi. Um, you notice how thin the tail is um, and how the bottom contours are set up. Lightweight layups, they're not the most durable. Uh, you're probably not gonna get the most life out of a really lightweight layup. This one's been really good, but they are the most high performance. Um, there's no denying when you have less weight, it's much more responsive and you get that more traditional flex feeling. Um, so this board's probably 14 pounds, topped. Actually, it's probably more like 12. I tend to like to ride it as a thruster. Then the niche boards, like this is a 8.6 Simmons style. I think they call it their Super Simmons from Dave Dom at Kings. You can see it's more of a, a wider outline with what we call a sort of step deck on the rail. So you have more volume in the center, so it makes it easier to stand on and, and a lot more buoyant for a heavier guy, but you still maintain that really thin, active rail that's easy to sink, very responsive. Um, you kind of have a wider tail on these um, to help maintain that stability and speed but it's a little lower rocker. You notice there's not as much curve. The much more pronounced rocker in, in the more shortboard style board. Um, the nice thing with these is because it does have that lower rocker, that flatter volume, that flatter bottom, you get a lot more speed. So they're served down the line really fast and you can see a pronounced uh, double concave in the bottom here for lift. Uh, and Dave likes to run his with the, the quad fin set up. Again, it's all about generating drive and speed. If you like to pivot hard off the bottom uh, and really hit the lip and, and try to serve shortboard style, you're gonna tend to prefer more of this style board. Whereas if you like down the line speed um, and more drawn out turns, kind of like uh, Dave Rostovich, this is gonna kind of be a little bit more of your speed. Get it? Got it? Good.